Alright, so I'm in my actual world. And unlike the testing world, I'm keeping this one pretty legit. I'm running perilously low on TNT though because the Enderman wrecked up. Wrecked up my old mob system down there. You can't even see it from where we are. Took a lot of work to patch it, and I thought to myself, do I want to place another level of blocks, really? Just to get it too high and stop Enderman from spawning? Or do I want to light all the nether wreck in here on fire? Close up the place and take my revenge on those damn Endermen? It's time to take revenge. This floor here is just because I can snake those dang arms through two squares and I don't want them to be able to get any any blocks, if possible. As you can see, that drop is pretty well fatal. And that was a carryover from my old system. <laughs> I, I'm going to go back, I'm going to pick up my stuff, and we're going to get started building. I ran back quick to get my stuff, I started working on this, and I realized... It can't hurt to give you guys a quick rundown of what I'm doing to the drop tube. Honestly, I could have left it alone, they would have torn chunks out the wall, and they probably wouldn't have been able to escape. But I figured better safe than sorry. Uh, so I'm just replacing all of the actual components of this with either cobblestone stairs, stone slabs or cobblestone slabs, or here because I want to be able to see in without the Enderman seeing me and freaking out, glass panes. You can actually apply this to anything, mob grinder, whatever. Just be sure not to use half slabs somewhere you'll be able to look through sideways because then the Enderman will flip out. Like, if you were to have a grinder, you'd want the side walls made of this, the top and bottom made of half slabs or the stairs, because that way you could see in and out, know exactly what's going on, and still prevent them from escaping or wrecking stuff. Right. That's really simple, though, so I'm just going to get up and... Once I know they can't break out, Start working on uh, Enderman Mob Farm version 2.0. Right, so as you can see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In the middle, seven from the other ones. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take just cobblestone slabs place them on top of these slabs. And we're gonna alternate level to level from now on. The reason we're gonna do this is it's so much easier to place uh, alternating slab types and just one of the same type of slab. I really smooth stone slabs are just um, cobblestone slabs plus something almost worthless plus time. I think we can swing that. Let me double check this. I don't usually go signless. Do. No. All right. So this needs to be one more away. So we're one going to go out nine with the center block. Eight with the other ones. If that took care of it. I'm gonna go around, do it with the rest of them. Remember, nine off from the center, eight off from the other. Alternate in the slabs. All right. So now that I'm done laying out the basic slabs, the only thing to really really do is finish the system that'll put cobblestone along these and then we'll slap up glass along the sides just to keep things from falling out.
Hey guys, bit of a refilm here. I was, um, actually filming a minute ago and my microphone cut out apparently. It was pretty epic though. There was me getting so distracted, I died of starvation, coming back, and there were creepers set on fire. A zombie that set on fire. Skeletons were shooting at me, creepers were exploding. Somehow I managed not to destroy destroy everything. Did have to replace some of the glass panes, but that was pretty cool. What I'm doing right now is knocking off some of the sprites so you can see basically the concept. There are squares like this that the Enderman can't pick up. They're not full squares. There are squares that are full squares that the Enderman can't pick up. The Enderman can only spawn on full squares too, so I need to build something that repaired itself. Now the first thing you need to do is set up an infinite... Oops. That wasn't an important block, I'm sure. Infinite cobble generator. That is just a stream of water flowing straight down. Make sure to put borders on it so that uh, it doesn't spread everywhere. And then two away with stone above, below, on three of the sides, lava. The side without stone should be the side nearest the water because that'll be what makes stone itself. You can see that works pretty fast. The only really important thing about where you put the lava is because of this setup This is the bridge of cobble that comes off of that. Ooh, thunder. These are the pistons. And there are four of them that push it forward. So we want our lava to be one above. our top half slab. We also need them to set distance away because we don't want these to push out too far and block uh, the drop tube that sends mobs to their death. So what we do is we start at the water, one square over is our cap, then one, two, three, four, five over is going to be our lava. That means our piston is going to be four, our water is going to be three. Now the way we have this set up is there's a track the minecart on it looping. It has two boosters here just to give enough oomph to get up and through that hole. This is the on off switch. That'll stop it when it gets there or start it. Say if we want to knock stuff down we don't want to have to worry about cobble generating when we do it. And there are three buttons here with three redstone torches inside the same blocks that lead to these. Now the reason we have it go up like this and hit a block so that it can fall down is it resets the speed every time. If you don't reset the speed, sooner or later it seems like they glitch out and stop running and we definitely want just to be able to leave this alone and have it work forever. Right, these two at the end, their torch goes to a block, 
the torch on one side with the block above it. Torch above. The torch above sends current directly to the piston. But if a block touching a piston is charged, like this torch will charge this one, that piston will activate as well. This torch goes through block, which goes to another torch with the piston directly above it. We actually don't have one on the side. What we did to power that one is the first button has a wire above it. Now this actually charges and uncharges this and because of the spacing and the way it's set up even though usually it'll be out instead of in it still works and that's all I care about. On this side there's a torch on the side leaning up to a block next to the piston again and that really, that's really it. You do that, you're fine. Now, let's travel back in time to before I finished this and filmed this scene twice. Whoa. I'll probably sound more cheerful, so that's a plus. <laughs> hey guys, I actually had to refilm this part too after checking my other audio. Really, this is just a uh, glass wall three high that Enderman can't move. The only important things to remember are to put half slabs on the regenerating bridges. And the regenerating don't mess with them. And to have one every three squares inside because spiders need to spawn the ground, but they also need to spawn without something in the middle of them. So that'll just get you the tall mobs. Including the extra tall mob, Enderman. Ooh, Enderman, how I hate you. I also blocked off any floor square with uh, a half half slab, or had it just made out of a stair. I blocked off all these. There's actually a flash of light when the bridge extends but just for a second and as long as you cobble the rest of this over it's pretty much entirely dark the rest of the time. Alright, let's go and see can this thing catch an enderman. <laughs> 